So not very often I use my tow boards. Depends on the log that I'm milling, but I raise this up, oh, about three inches off of the bunk. And the point of that is I want the pith the same both ends of this log. This is a good size log. This is a uh, eight foot pine, white pine, eastern white pine, and it's 22 inches at the widest point along the small end. So we're gonna end up getting, what I need are 20 pieces of one by 12, but I'll get way more than that out of it. It'll be, uh, it's, it's a nice log. The unfortunate part of this log is that it's a yard log. And I picked up, I don't know if you've seen a video, I picked up, I think, uh, probably 12 or 14 of these logs and two of them had significant amounts of metal in them. So I'm definitely going to have to make sure that I listen carefully <laughs> for a fence or a sign or something that's in this log. This is a good sized log, so we don't want to ruin any more blades than we have to. Sometimes these free logs aren't all they're cracked up to be. Yeah, it's 26 inches at the big end, 22 at the small end. But I'm going to square up a nice cant, whatever makes sense. You know, if it makes sense, a 16 inch cant in the middle of all of this, then that's what I'm going to get. Then I'll get my 20 pieces of, uh, hopefully anyway, 20 pieces of 1 by 12 of this. So beautiful Saturday morning. You can hear the birds. Finally, it seems like spring has sprung here. Uh, when the robins show up, there was two dozen robins on my lawn listening for worms. So. <laughs> They're, they're back to work anyway. These slabs are going to be big and heavy too, so I might take some small slab cuts just so I can handle them and not hurt myself early in the day. It's uh, not even 8 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, so. All right, pitter patter.
Hey, like them apples. <laughs> anyway, what a nuisance that was. It broke. It looks like it's been fractured for a while. You can see, usually it shakes. You can see a little bit of vibration. I have a bit of warning before a blade breaks, but anyway, I think this is a, a Ripper 37. You can tell by the, how thick it is, but no shame for it. I think this blade here, if it's a Ripper 37, if I can find the label on it, what that means is that I've had this blade for a couple of years and it's likely got a, a dozen sharpenings on it or so. And as my good friend Bill McClellan says, who does sharpen blades for a living, there's only so many times you can bend one of these blades before it eventually breaks. And he's absolutely right. Good opportunity to feel all the bearings too without a, a blade on it. So this is a wood miser blade I believe. This would be a 10 degree 10 degree wood miser blade. They call them the double hard. And this is not a new blade. So this one's going to be subject to breaking as well. But I'm going to pay attention to the shaking and see, make sure that it doesn't uh, give me any telltale signs that it's about to catastrophically fail. Seven hundred pounds. And that's all there is to change the blade. Not a big issue. so don't cut the legs off my tripod put this back up to 19 inches and finish cutting that slab hopefully there wasn't a piece of metal in there that i didn't see i did i looked at the teeth and didn't see any damage on the teeth so probably going to be all right and if it breaks this blade this is also an old blade so we'll see
show you what we need to really pay attention to now. We're getting into the good part of this log and we don't want to mess up this log. If we mess up uh, one cut, we're not going to get all the all the one by 12s that are in this log out. So the next thing we have to do, we're going to turn that right on to this flat side is on the bottom. But you can see where I got my backstops up. So if I were just to keep on slicing along and forget about those backstops, you can see how easily it would be to cut into one and root another blade. Ask me how I know. Can you see this cut right here? Right there. I made it almost all the way through that one time before the blade actually, uh, for the, it just wouldn't cut any farther. So what these boards are for? This customer is making beehives. So he's got, uh, um, he's a honey producer. So he needs one by 12s rough cut pine uh, to make beehives. And it sounds like he, he makes these hives about every five years he replaces them. So a good trick also for this deck, I'm just rambling off here, but I made this mill extra wide. So I can have two 18 inch boards side by side uh, without any problem. I can have the cant and I can have the board so I can flip those back up later to edge and it will make, um, it's, instead of trying to carry them off, if they're any wider than that, I'd have to put them on the grapple of the tractor and just to have a place out of the way. If I had a mill with, a, with loading arms, then I would just put them on the loading arms over here so that I could uh, deal with them later. But we're gonna flip that upside down cut that top slab off, hopefully get down to the 12 inch mark and then stand it up 90 degrees and take our 12 inch boards off this way. Makes sense here in a minute. There's gonna be a lot of other things in here besides uh, one by 12s. We're gonna get one by sixes and one by eights and one by fours. So hopefully the yield in this log is as good as I expect it to be. No metal yet either. Backstops down. We soon won't need those backstops. It'll come up against those knives at the edge. So this cant is 17 inches wide, which means these boards are 17 inches wide. So we're gonna take this down to about 12 inches. I'm gonna make a 14 inch cut probably, slab cut. Find the lowest part of the log, which is right there. Yeah, 14 inch would be a nice small slab cut. And then we'll take some one inch boards below that. So there, I ended up with 16 pieces of 1 by 12, six pieces of 1 by 8, and one 1 by 10. So I still need to get four more pieces, probably should get six more pieces of 1 by 12 out of another log. And the reason is, uh, a few of those, just a little punky in the center, had a little core rot, which for beehive, I don't know how critical it is. <laughs> I don't know how fussy they are, but I want to make sure that what he's buying from me is as top quality as possible. So I'm gonna grab another log. You don't have to watch all that again. So I'm gonna <laughs> pick that for another day, another video. So I hear my neighbor Sterling across the street. He's cutting his own firewood and it's breaking my heart that I'm not over there helping him. I've got a guy coming in about half an hour to pick up lumber. So I gotta wait till he shows up and goes and then I'm gonna go over with the split force and we're gonna bust up some of that stuff for him. So anyway, it's been a good morning so far. 45 minutes made a couple hundred bucks it's just uh just the way this saturday should go and i'm going to take the afternoon off i'm hoping it gets enough above freezing today it's supposed to be eight degrees celsius today i think that i want to end up uh getting another batch of sap so 
We should get about 100 liters today. That would be ideal. I had to stop the boil this morning. I didn't put any more wood in our evaporator because we're out of sap to replenish with. So we've boiled down uh, 160 liters on our third batch where that will be 1160 liters is what we collected in sap and we're going to end up i don't know how much well I'll, I'll do a tally at the end what we end up with finished syrup but this year's product is the best quality we've ever made i think we're filtering it more too we're filtering it three times four times really we filter it before it goes in the pan as raw sap and then we filter it before it goes from the front pan to the back pan and then we filter it through a pre-filter and then a, an orlon filter at the end so uh, when it goes in the bottle it's it's should be as good as good a product as as possible so anyway that's all i have to say about all of this this morning thanks for watching feel free to subscribe that'd be awesome take care bye bye